hi guys, this is Brigitta. Hello. And I'm sitting here with um, Brecht Salens. Yes, yes, indeed. But that's a Dutch version and I think a lot of people will stumble over Brecht. Yes, indeed, in English I just say Brecht or Brett. It um, doesn't matter much to me how people address me. So, you are a psychic medium. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now tell me, what's the difference between a psychic and a medium? Um, well, and uh, where I come from in Lilydale, and I'm in greetings with that. Uh, every psychic is, I mean, every medium is psychic, but not all psychics are medium. As to uh, mediums communicate strict, uh, strictly with people in spirit, where psychics uh, get the information uh, mainly from uh, the energy field of the person in front of them. That makes sense. So, when did you first realize that you had a gift? Uh, it's a really interesting trajectory as to um, I started getting into uh, psychic readings with tarot cards okay. when I was um, how old was I like 1920 just in a transition period yeah I was introduced to tarot and I really liked it because um, just right away the cards talked to me and I felt like there was so much they were telling so much more than just the, the image on the thing and then I uh, had a evolution of uh, going to different classes and discovering more until I went to Delphi in Georgia mm -hmm. and I wanted to, to develop my skill of, of reading cards but there I discovered that it was quite easy for me to communicate with spirit too. Mm -hmm. um, it, it, it noticed for myself was not much of a challenge and in the meanwhile what was interesting too I was doing regression work with friends yeah and one friend took me regressed me back to when i was five years old and i distinctly remember communicating with spirit in my bedroom okay. on a regular basis but i didn't remember it as a young adult so it took that regression work to get back to that that's interesting yeah yeah it's uh, it's and it's actually my opinion that uh the majority of people have memories in their childhood uh of, of communicating with spirit and a lot of people just don't remember it anymore. If they would do some work on that, they, they would probably remember. But that's right. I mean, you know, we say kids have imaginary friends. Yes. Yes, indeed. Or you get to pick up impressions of like, for instance, when we see an old lady uh, who's a widow, they say like, but her husband was with her. It's like, no. It's like, oh, but I see him. And then kids often describe the, the husband because they, they see it, they notice it. But you also went to the Arthur Finley College, didn't you? Yes, indeed. Yeah, it's a great place. It's uh, definitely a, a, on the top five of my favorite places to go to for classes. Um, I think it's a great place because it's so open and they really stay away from uh, main ideas of a should and shouldn't. They're, mm -hmm. they're, they're, it's, it's my understanding that the way they, they teach mediumship is they share how it works for them, but then they leave a lot of freedom for the medium to develop and, and use the techniques that work for them. Whereas yeah. uh, sometimes some, some psychic or medium teachers uh, tend to uh, kind of uh, push people in their mold, whereas they stay away from that in Arthur Finley. Just out of curiosity, who was your teacher at uh, Arthur Finley? Uh, it's in the back of my head. Was it uh, Libby? No, no, uh, Nora. Nora, who was back then the, uh, the president of the NSU. Okay, yeah. all right. Great lady. Love you, Laura. <laughs> Tell me something. Why do you do this work? Why do I do this yeah, work? Yeah, why do you do this work? Uh, the, the, so the reason why I do it is because um, for me, it's just so satisfying to be in that channel of healing and loving energy. Mm -hmm. uh, in a reading, I always do this little preparation for myself mm -hmm. where I disconnect from my own interests and everything I say and do from that moment on is only a hundred percent for the person in front of me yeah. and as such I feel like in that moment I am very humble and very devoted to the person in front of me and the spirit people that are touching in and it's sacred for me to be that intermediate between the people in spirit and uh, the person in front of me and and, and that is extremely gratifying yeah, gratifying for me gratifying. as to um, being able to do this work of standing in between and, and just providing the service. So how do you see spirit? Do you uh, see third eye. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I mean, I see impressions as to like I, I can see, notice, um, I would maybe say like shades or like I feel presences very strongly like when I go into a place where there's activity, you know, usually my wife and me go for like, whoa. 
but uh, the communication with me almost goes uh, always goes through my third eye. So like yeah. I get visuals, I get impressions, uh, I hear things too. As to um, sometimes my ears just hurt and I just know okay there's somebody who really wants to convey a message here with me. Yeah, that's clear cognizance, isn't it? Is it clear cognizance? Uh, no, that's knowing. Uh, clear audience. Clear audience. There's clear yeah. cognizance, clear audience, clear sentience. Uh, clairvoyance. Clairvoyance and there's clear um, has another name tasting. You know, some people get very strong mm -hmm. flavors That's like right. smoke That's or right. sweetness yes. or potatoes or it's it's another way of spirit to convey a message with us. That's true. Now, um, what is the most common question you get from your clients? I think the most common question, uh, the most people who come just for the mediumship is mm -hmm. they want to know if their loved ones are good. Yeah. If they're in a nice, in a in a happy space, if um, they're well received, if they're content, because uh, of course a lot of people are afraid for the transition. What's on the other side? Yeah. And um, very often I notice when I tell people like, oh, they're happy. They're like, oh. And then from there it's like, okay, now we can just move on to the but, the more pleasant part. Uh, but technically, when we, you know, we are here temporarily. And um, I always say we are spiritual beings having a human experience. Mm -hmm. And when we, you know, when we cross over, we go back home. Yes, yes, indeed. And that's we that's my impression. Yes, yes. Another thing I always uh, remind people of too is that um, it's my experience that the afterlife is very similar, like here, mm -hmm. as to depending where our mindset is, uh, how loving and uh, tolerant we are towards people around us. It's very similar. If if we are in a place right now that we can love people and uh, be open and trusting, mm -hmm. uh, then we, it's going to be very embracing and joyful in the other way, on the other side. If we're in a place right now where um, trust is is hard for us. And um, we, uh, we 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 give in to fear, mm -hmm. then it's very likely that this tendency will continue on the other side. And as such, you know, the the, the Catholic Church was right as to like you live good, you go to a good place; you live bad, you go to a bad place. It's just there's more colors than just two. So how do you explain this? And I'm not sure if you've come across it. I'm pretty sure you must have. Have you ever had people come to you who? have had somebody pass over cross over and they did them wrong or they were abused or they had another traumatic experience and they've come to you and have you been like an interim um, an intermediate <laughs> <laughs> i know what you mean yeah. uh, there's two things that come to mind on this question first is that um um it's my understanding and uh, tons of books of near-death experiences mm -hmm. confirm that is that uh, there is no condemnation on the other side no so Correct. as soon as people are on the other side no matter how um, challenging and uh, uh, disturbing things are events are to us once on the other side we look at everything as learning experience and we were just participants in the movie yes. uh, another big thing though too is that uh, love never dies it always uh, death survives love so even though people um, might have uh, been very hard on us in life. Mm -hmm. If they love us, yes, indeed. It's, it's, it's often to me that people come to me, in, in spirit, come to me and say uh, in a humble, very humble way that they see now how they could have done things differently. It's not so much that they regret that they're alive. It's more so that because of their love for the people, mm -hmm. they, uh, they, they see how it, 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 uh, it had a negative effect on people. And the most, the thing what's very amazing for me is also, is that, like I said, when I started reading, I put myself aside. Mm -hmm. So I really become this conduit of emotions. Mm -hmm. And sometimes people are in front of me who, you know, their mind is very much into resistance because it's, it's a dark page in their, in, in their, in their personal experience. And, and, and then like, I really get emotional. Like I've had moments that I cry. <laughs> in front of people and they're like oh and i'm like i'm just sharing i mean yep. this, this is regret and this love coming from this person so it basically helps both the deceased and the um the one that's still on this plane yes because uh because i become this conduit uh in between um uh, people's hearts open up and then the message is more so the energy that's being transmuted than uh than what's being said as to uh, another big aspect of what I understand to be good mediumship 
is more so building that energetic bridge between people mm -hmm. than than what's being said. It's it's being in that channel where it's, um, it's it's often actually that I give identifiers of people where my left brain because it's still present. I mean, I tried to shut it down, but mm -hmm. it's still present. Uh, tells me like, well, those identifiers are really not so strong. But the people in front of me, I see them tearing up and they're like, yeah. wow, I really feel the energy of the person in the room. Mm -hmm. I mean, like right now I get chills as I tell you. So I know, yep. you know, I'm not making this up. This is really uh, the sacredness of the work. And actually coming back to your question, why do I do this? Um, being in this channel, the emotions are so pure mm -hmm. and will not uh, restrict it, unrestricted that in my experience, there's no other movie or job or work that could take me on such a intense, overwhelming roller coaster of emotions. I mean, how do you advise <clears throat> people uh, to become aware of their loved ones in spirit? Uh, don't talk yourself out of it. Just know that they're there. Thank it's you. my experience that when. Um, when we, uh, when you think of somebody that you love, uh, that person is around you right away. There is no restriction as to spirit. Mm -hmm. uh, there is no such thing as speed of light. There's speed of thought. And the moment you think of it, people are close to you. Mm -hmm. So, um, as such, we just talk ourselves out of everything all the time. Whereas if we would just stick to our own gut and our own belief, um, our lives would be so much easier. Yeah, and then of course you have the scents and the pennies and the feathers and... Yeah, sometimes people ask me and there's 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 few instances that indeed I do tell people look the, the, those are the things that they see and they're like, oh my god, yes. Mm -hmm. But there's other instances too that I tell them like, um, yes, they tell me that it's the pennies. They're really happy that you think of them with them, but no, they don't place them there. <laughs> <laughs> there's times when I tell that to people um it's 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 double-sided so like sometimes being spirit does indeed uh say like um i placed it there i don't know i think anyhow it doesn't really matter as long as we think of them in That's a loving right. way it's it's just really fun yeah so what does it feel like when spirit is present um i don't know it's subtle i still like and spirit is constantly present like even as we talk there's there's people around us who are enthusiastic and curious and just encouraging us hello yes indeed oh no <laughs> definitely i mean the moment you tell it you're just they're there so um yeah. they're they're constantly around mm -hmm. when there's a need of of healing like for instance people are stuck in grief or yeah. when there's a need to feel support like for instance uh if you take exams or we have a test or an mm -hmm. interview um, those moments we can feel it by having a grace a feeling of calm even though we're very rather nervous the moment it matters shoof, a lot of people uh, I'm sure recognize that is that, that there's this calm like you, you you're nervous as heck and then the moment you walk into um, the the interview yeah. you're just calm and things float or even in moments of prayer for for loved ones who passed away mm -hmm. uh, the moment we sit down and say a little prayer like hey you know I wish you were here a lot of people confirm to me that they feel that grace go, coming over them and even though they're sad they they, they feel that they're being supported and there's there's okay. a higher force present so what is the most memorable um, experience that was a tough one I read that one before <laughs> <laughs> so what is the most memorable experience um, you've had from this gift I know you, you said a lot but yeah it's one that really stands um, out well there's a whole bunch like little ones I think the most memorable for me is definitely that um, I met my wife in uh, regression work prior to meeting her mm -hmm. in meditation I, I saw her twice again too and then when I saw her in person I, I just call it out she's like uh i don't know if that is something you worked on other girls but it's not working but i have this now to show that it does so <laughs> so that's definitely something where spirit um i feel very um reassured that my connection is real mm -hmm. and that uh, i'm on a spiritual path otherwise i also like the idea that uh, more and more in life and i think a lot of people who watch this video will notice that too uh, things have this mysteri mysterious way of aligning. Uh, the first thing that comes to mind is this summer, 
um, in the Lidl, the post of, la of his lady. One day she uh, strained her ankle. Actually, it was worse than an ankle, but she was restricted of not being able to uh, to move. And my wife runs the coffee shop in Lilydale. Mm -hmm. So um, before we went to, to buy supplies, I said, hey, why don't we just make a coffee for her and bring it to her? Mm -hmm. She lives just outside of the gate. And she's like, well, how does she have her coffee? I'm like, I don't know, just, just make her a chai. She'll probably like that. <clears throat> so I said, let's take a chai and a cookie. So we'll go and the Sarah rings the bell. And as she rings the bell, the lady was just about to sit back in the chair with a little frustration because she wanted to make chai tea at home but her uh, ice machine was broke and she was out of chai. And she was just frustrated going and heading back to the chair and be like, oh, I guess I won't have it today. And there my wife rings the bell, gives the chai and a cookie. And she's like, oh my God. So this is one of the things that I feel like, okay, I know I'm spiritually connected. And um, as they say, God takes care of you. Yeah. As a spiritualist background, uh, we would say uh, infinite intelligence mm -hmm. uh, because God is uh, sometimes a little bit restricted as to like certain religious groups. Mm -hmm. And um, so as such, I believe that indeed we are all spirits on a spiritual path. Correct. And uh, those alignments are just for me really fun confirmations that, um, you know, that, that I'm a part of the grid. Yeah. So another question, do you give workshops? Do you teach seminars? Uh, um, not right now. My wife and me did a few workshops in Lilydale a couple of years ago. Now, by the way, Lilydale is in New York, people. Yeah, it's a great place. It's the world's largest spiritualist community in the world. Oh, I did that twice. And um, it's uh, we have a summer season, July, August, two months. Yeah, it's super busy then, isn't it? Oh, yes, we get, um, I think it's 35,000 visitors Gosh. we get on average in uh, the span of two months. Mm -hmm. And there's classes, workshops, uh, renowned teachers and writers that come during that season. It's, it's really wow. great. But you don't teach any workshops here in Florida? Uh, no, not right now, I think, but it's coming up. Like I said, I'm working on something okay. uh, that co it's, it's an ideology of uh, find, how to find the, the middle path. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm working on that. Uh, I've been chewing on it for the last 10 years. And now uh, Spirit is telling me that it's like it's time. It's, it, this is ready <laughs> for okay. it to bring out. So check out my website and uh, I'll, uh, I'll be sure to make a link there. And one more question, have you written a book or are you in the, in, in the midst of writing a book? No, no, I'm not. I uh, actually, uh, prior to professionally engaging with the mediumship, I, I was thinking of writing a book about uh, that, that ideology that I mm -hmm. uh, want to bring out now. For now, I want to do it on video because I think uh, for new generations, it's more approachable. Mm -hmm. As to, I, I love books, I'm, I'm addicted to reading. But I think that to, to, to reach the younger generation, which I believe is the future, um, I'm 36 now. Well, people always think I'm like 27. Yeah, I think so too. <laughs> I really thought you were younger. Yeah, I'm 36. So I've got a lot of good time ahead of me. So yes, I mean, it's funny because I do think for myself that I'm like in my late 20s. But then when I talk to younger people, like, oh my God, I am getting older. <laughs> I guess it's the standard thing. And um, when people want to book a reading with you, you also give phone readings, right? Yes, Skype? indeed. Mm -hmm. And it's worldwide. Um, I actually prefer just a regular phone call mm -hmm. because I call into a service online that allows me to record the conversation and the people get a full recording uh, at the end of the session. I, a lot of people tell me I don't need a recording. Mm -hmm. uh, it's yeah. my experience that it's good to have a recording. Don't listen to it right away, maybe a week later because very often the medium will repeat things, or I as a medium too, of course, will repeat things that, uh, <laughs> putting myself in third person, there you go, I don't matter. Uh, <laughs> so, um, uh, where was I? Choo choo. The, uh, the medium will say things that we are like, okay, okay, okay. Mm -hmm. But then afterwards it's like, oh, that's what I meant. That's, that's, it's, there's often little clues, uh, things that we say, I don't know why, but I just feel like saying this. And then afterwards it's very significant. So um, it's helpful to listen to it like a couple of weeks later, just one time. I never do. Well, I would suggest to do it no, because it's no. uh, what I need to remember. I'll remember. Yeah, it's. Uh, but I know people like to listen to it. It never hurts yeah. to do something different no. once in a while. 
another thing I want to share too is that um, some people want to hold off on phone readings because they think that the connection is not as strong. But it's there. And um, it really doesn't matter. Just a few days ago, I did a phone reading for somebody in Australia. Mm -hmm. And uh, just again and again, in the, the reading, the lady was like, oh my God, you're so touching the things. Uh, secondly, also, um, interestingly, a phone reading prevents the medium from going psychic. Mm -hmm. uh, because when you give a reading as a medium to somebody sitting in front of you, it's not that hard to read body uh, language as to like, okay, she's understanding this, she's not understanding this, okay, she's getting emotional now, this and that. With a phone reading, we just stick to the facts. The only thing I can do is say, does that make sense to you? Do you understand yeah. this? And then I just keep giving information, which for me actually, I'm at a point now where I slightly prefer phone readings to in-person mm -hmm. readings because it's just, it's my connection straight with spirit. Yeah. I'm not distracted by the person in front of me. That makes sense. Okay, I'm gonna cut it here. All right. So I wanna say thank you. Thank you, Brigitte. <laughs>